hello everyone you're welcome to my youtube channel all right so um in this video we want to continue our lesson on um uh, the concept of trigonometry and trigonometric uh, functions all right or trigonometric ratios and identities how do you know how to handle these angles for example you are asked to find the sign of let's say um 211 for instance you know, you should be able to have a clue of what the sign of 211 should be, such as things like, is it going to be positive or negative? You know, can I reduce the angle to a smaller angle and be able, because when we use our four-figure tables to, you know, to evaluate these trig functions, it is important to note that you only have the trig values for angles from 0 to 90. So you can find, you know, angles beyond that. So how do you evaluate all other angles, you know, when you just have from 0 to 90? So you would have to be able to reduce any angle you are given to that size, that's acute angle, to be able to determine the size or the value of that um, the trig function using your mathematical table. And that is what this also does for us. So let's begin. So we begin with the first. And the first here, we want to look at the acute angles themselves. Okay, so what's the nature of our trig functions? Remember, we're basically looking at sine, uh, cosine, and tangent. The other ones are just inverses of this angle. So when our angle theta is acute, so how does the trig function look? Okay, so the first is that we should note that if we have... Um, uh, acute angle like the theta we have here, our sign, of course, the sign of theta is going to be equal to, of course, you know that this is a circle, the r here representing the radius of the circle, y, the y here is the value of this side, and then the x here is the value of, of course, we're having x here because this is x-axis, and y here because this is along the y-axis. So this is going to give us opposite all over hypotenuse which is y over r and so now uh, remember what we are checking here is whether the sign of an acute angle is going to be positive or negative so and of course this is positive y because it's going above the x-axis and this is a positive uh, x because it is to the right hand side of the y-axis so that means this is going to be positive Okay, because positive over positive is positive. And what about the cosine? The cosine is also going to be positive because it will be x, which is adjacent over y, sorry, over r, which is uh, the hypotenuse. So it is also positive. And what about our tangent? So our tangent is also going to be positive because it is opposite, which is y, all over adjacent, which is uh, x and both are positive so it will definitely be positive so the implication of this is that whenever our theta is acute and you know the meaning of acute less than 90 degrees all our trigonometric functions are positive all of them so if you check for instance the sine of 30 like we did under special angles you know that this is positive half you know and then if you check for tan 30, you are going to have positive 1 all over root 3. And for the cos of 30, you will get, of course, root 3 all over 2. Okay, so for any acute angle you pick, you can use your calculator to check that. Pick any angle that is uh, from 0 and at least, uh, this is how we can write that. 0 is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal, sorry, x is strictly less than 90, okay, that is acute, okay, um, and of course, we can also even remove 0, okay, we can remove 0, so x is greater than 0 and strictly less than 90, so any angle, angle of this size is acute and definitely will be positive for any trigonometric function. 
So for acute angle, we have all, and that is the first quadrant. Remember that when you're measuring positive angles, you go anti-clockwise. So you start from here and you measure in this direction. And so if our theta is of this size, from here to anything less than 90 degrees, it must not meet this line. If it touches the 90 degrees, it's no longer acute. And of course, under the spatial angles, I showed us the values of angle 90 for each of these uh, trigonometric functions. You may want to see that video. Of course, I will put the description, uh, sorry, the link to the description of this video. All right. So now, what if the angle is no longer acute? What if it is an obtuse angle? That is an angle between uh, 90, that is above 90, but less than 180. So we are saying that our x should be more than 90 degrees, but should be less than 180 degrees. Okay, so that's our theta. Sorry, let's use theta instead of this x here. Okay, so what should then be the nature of uh, our trigonometric functions? And we are quickly going to see that now from our diagram, you are going to see that at that point, of course, your angle now is the alpha here. Okay, sorry, we are using alpha in the second one. So it means that your alpha is uh, between 90 of course you know this is angle 90 and this is angle 180 here so it's between 90 and 180 okay so now uh, remember that we are setting this angle here to be equal to the first angle so that is to say that our alpha is actually also equal to 180 minus this angle theta here okay so whatever is our theta which is the same angle as here so is uh, if you remove it from 180 it will give you the value of our alpha which is actually up to okay so we want to get the value now what is it going to be so for sine you will see that uh, uh, we want to see how all these are going to play out you will see in the end it is only sine that will be positive okay so if we look for the sign of an obtuse angle an angle between 90 and 180 all right so our alpha is 180 minus theta and so the sign of 180 minus theta will be in this second quadrant and so you are going to make use of this triangle in the second quadrant and so what you are doing now is opposite of course you are looking at this angle here so the opposite of that angle is still your positive y all over the hypotenuse now is still your r so you are going to have r there so what it means is that the sine of 180 minus theta is actually the same thing as uh, your y over r which is what we got as the sine of theta alone so that means this is actually equal to sine theta so do take note of that so the implication here is that if we ever are given an angle that is in the second quadrant, let's say angle 130, that this is actually the same thing as looking for the sine of 180 minus this 130, which is actually the sine of 50. And of course, if you check this, you see that it is correct. For instance, if you look for the sine of, uh, let's say, 120 okay i'm using 120 because it is a special angle so what he's saying is that this is the same as sine 60 and please kindly use your calculator of four figure table to confirm this so you confirm that this is actually equal to the root of three all over two and this is also root three all over two okay now meanwhile this uh, sign is positive in the second quadrant so it is positive but what about the cosine because you can actually see it here y is positive r is positive also okay so let me remove there okay now what about the cosine the second one so for cosine in this case you are also looking for the cosine of 180 minus theta which is in the second quadrant as well all right and that's going and in the second quadrant the considering the triangle there the adjacent is negative x because it is the x that is behind that's to the left of the 
uh, the the y axis okay so and it has to be negative so all over the hypotenuse is still positive and so you are getting minus x over r and th that is negative so what it means is that cosine is negative in the second quadrant okay now however you can also see that minus x over r is actually negative uh, the value of cos theta remember that the value of cos theta is x over r so it means that this is minus so what it means is that if you now give me something like cos 120 like we have sign here this is going to be minus of uh, the one uh, 180 minus this particular 120 so i can replace my theta as 120 and I remove it from 180 and that's going to give me 60. So if you use your calculator or four figure table to check it, you will see that it is actually true that uh, cos 120 is going to give you minus half. And of course, if you check cos 60, it is half. So when you multiply by minus, so you see that the both of them will give you minus sign. So the cosine is negative in the second quadrant. And the same is the case of tangent. And we can see that here for tan of 180 minus theta, which is in the second quadrant, you are going to now get that, of course, in the second quadrant, the triangle there, the opposite is your y, while your adjacent is your minus x. And of course, this is negative, minus x over y. Meanwhile, what is, sorry, minus y over x. And meanwhile, what is y over x? Our y over x from the first quadrant is your tan. So it means that the tan also behaves like the cosine. So if I have the tan of 150, this is actually the same as the tan of 180 minus 150, which is 130, sorry, minus. In other words, like I said, that your four-figure table is usually in uh, angles from 0 to 90. So if you now give me one a 50 and you expect me to use the four-figure table, all I need to do is to now subtract that 150 because it's already more than 90 and it is obtuse. So it's between 90 and 180. I will subtract it from 180 and whatever I get, I will take the negative of it and that will give me the answer. And of course, if you check this too, you will see that you will get the same answer. Okay, now we go to the next uh, form of triangle, uh, yeah, of angle. What if the angle now is more than 180 and is now between 180 and 270? Okay, so what happens? Remember that here is still our theta. This is still our R. Here is Y, positive Y. Here is positive X. So in this case here now, the Y here, or remember that the Y below is going to be positive, uh, negative Y. So that means here will be minus Y. Here will be minus X. And here is still R. Your R is still positive at that point. Okay, so let's try. Remember that here will still be your theta. So that means in that third quadrant, the angle that you are looking for, maybe angle, uh, let me call it angle alpha or gamma now, or whatever. It can still be alpha at this point. So the angle we are referring to this in this point is going to be 180 plus this theta. So you're adding the theta here to get the total angle from here to this point. So because this angle from, let me use this other blue here. The angle from here to here is going to be 180. That's angle on a straight line. And then to complete it, you add the theta here. And that's going to give you 180 plus theta. Okay, so in other words, for us to get the angle, or oh, sorry, all the trig ratios of this particular angle, what is it going to be? We always start with sine. So for the sine of the alpha in this case, is going to be the sine of 180 plus alpha sorry plus theta and um, of course in that quadrant which is the third quadrant you are looking for sine sine is opposite over hypotenuse so we have minus y all over hypotenuse is still r 
So, and you recall that in the first quadrant, our y over r is actually sine theta. So, the implication here is that sine is still negative in the second, in the third quadrant. It's positive in the uh, second quadrant. In fact, it's the only positive in the uh, second quadrant. I didn't mention that here. So, in the second quadrant, only sine is positive. Only sine theta is positive. The rest are all negative. Okay, so now in the third quadrant, it is negative. However, the other thing to note is that if you are giving something like, uh, let's say, sine an angle in the third quadrant, that let's say, for instance, 200, you know, 200 is between 180 and 270, that this is the same thing as a minus uh, sine. Now, 180, what will I add to 180 to give me 200? That is 20. Okay, so what it means is that this is equal to minus the sine of 20. Okay, so all I need to do in using my four-figure table, I should just look for the sine of 20 and take the negative of it, that that will be equal to the sine of 200. All right, so sine is negative in the second in the third quadrant. Now let's look at the next one. What about cosine? So the cos alpha here will also be, and then this one is going to be, of course, in the third quadrant, the, the, the adjacent is minus x, while the hypotenuse is still our r. So this is still negative, and it is minus cos theta in this case. So if you do the same, you see that that is what applies here also, that if I have something like, let's say, the same cos two, 210, this is also minus cos uh, 180 plus 30, and so 30 is the theta here. Okay, so that is to say this is equal to minus cos 30. And if you check, this is going to give you uh, minus uh, root 3 over 2. So check with your calculator. You will see you have minus uh, 0 0.8660 as your cos 210. All right? And then finally, for tangent, what is the nature of tangent in this case? Of course, it will still be the tan of 180 plus theta, and um, what is the tan in that third quadrant? It is still your adjacent, sorry, opposite over adjacent, and our opposite is minus y all over adjacent minus x. So you see that minus will cancel minus here, and so you have y over x, and recall that y over x in the first quadrant is your tan theta. So what he's saying is that uh, tan is positive, in the third quadrant only tan is positive okay so and the implication in this case is that if i have the tan of 210 and i know that 210 is the same as uh, 180 plus uh, 30 okay so what it means is that tan 210 is simply equal to the tan of 30 positive tan it's not negative okay so that's what that is trying to show us Okay, now, um, of course, you can check if this is true, and you will see that it is correct. So whenever you're given any angle that is in the third quadrant, just remove 180 from it. What you have left, take the turn of it, it will still be the same. All right, well, of course, we're going to see examples. Now, but lastly, we will go to the last quadrant. For the last quadrant, we are still retaining here as our theta, here as our y, and here as our x. Okay, this is still our R. Here is R. And then we are calling this place uh, theta as well. But there will now be minus Y. While, uh, let me put it this way. Here will be minus Y. While, uh, of course, that's all we have here. Okay. Now, meanwhile, remember in the fourth quadrant, what you have is a movement from here to here. Okay. Which is going to be 360 minus this small theta here that we represented there. Okay, so the implication is that our sine, beginning with sine of uh, that particular angle there, which is 360 minus theta, 
Okay, so you will see that this is going to also be in that fourth quadrant, the triangle we have there, also using our opposite over our hypotenuse. Our opposite in that case is minus y over r. So you see that this is negative. So it's going to be minus sine theta, okay? So because your y over r is sine theta. So I, I, want, I hope you understand the summary of all of this. Of course, I'm going to draw a summary for all of this. So what this thing means is that sine 360 minus theta will be equal to minus uh, sine theta. So an example is if I have something like, let's say, the sine of an angle in the fourth quadrant. Uh, an example of an angle in the fourth quadrant is, let, let's say, 300. Okay, so of course the meaning of this, of course you know that this is the same thing as a sine 360. It means is that my answer would be the same as a minus sine 60. You just pick only this one. All right, so that's what this is trying to show us here. Okay, and then uh, what about tangent? So the meaning is that sine is negative here. So what about cosine? So let's look at cos. Uh, so if we have cos 360 minus theta in that fourth quadrant, that is adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent is a positive x, while that's with respect to this theta, while our r remains the hypotenuse. And this is the same thing we got as our cosine in the first quadrant, which is cos theta. So that means cos 360 minus theta is actually equal to cos theta. And if you use that in this example, what it means is that cos 300 is actually equal to cos 360 minus 300, which is 60. And if you check these two things, you will get the same answer. And finally, for angle, sorry, for tangent, the tangent of 360 minus theta is actually the same as in that quadrant, opposite over hypotenuse. Our opposite is minus y over, over adjacent, sorry, which is x. So this is actually your value of your theta in the first quadrant. And so that is, uh, sorry, your tangent in the first quadrant, and that is tan theta. Okay, so that means the tangent of 360 minus theta is equal to minus tan theta. So if I have tan 300, this is simply equal to minus tan 360 minus uh, 300, which is 60. So if you check any of this, you will see that your answer will always be the same. Okay, so finally, we, we, we are seeing that only cosine is uh, positive here. Okay, so if we draw a summary, the first thing we will notice is that for the four quadrants, all of the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant, and only tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and only cosine is, uh, sorry, yeah, only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. And that is why we have an abbreviation uh, which I used while I was growing up add sugar to coffee. I don't know which one you know. Okay, so add, okay, so this can help you remember. That's A for all, S for sine, T for tangent, and C for cosine. So all are positive in the first quadrant, only sine is positive in the second quadrant, only tan in the third, and only cosine in the fourth quadrant. So that's the first summary. While um, there are other summaries to see here, it means that in the first, in the second quadrant, sine uh, 180 minus theta is equal to sine theta. Sine is positive, and cosine 180 minus theta is equal to minus is negative minus cos theta, while tan 180 minus theta is equal to negative also, the negative of tan theta. That's what I try showing us with all of this. So this is the first summary here. And then in the third quadrant, you can see all the summaries. The cosine of 180, sorry, the sine of 180 plus theta is equal to minus sine theta, while the cosine of 180 
plus theta is equal to minus cos theta and it is only tangent that is positive and finally for the fourth quadrant the sine of 360 minus theta is equal to sine of minus theta and the cosine is equal to positive and then the tangent is negative okay so take note of all the summaries of course we are going to do some examples now but before we do that example what about the negative angles so let me quickly summarize the negative angles here So when we have the trig ratios of negative angles, so how do you handle that? All right, so for the first one, now we are going to get all of these from um, the last quadrant. The last quadrant will uh, actually help us quickly see it. So because we can see a negative angle in the last quadrant. The reason is because whenever you have an angle, uh, a quadrant like this, and you want to measure angles, when you measure anti-clockwise, it is positive. But if you measure clockwisely, it is negative. So if I measure clockwisely, the theta I'm going to get here is actually supposed to be negative theta. Okay, so now what it means is that uh, if I have something like sine of minus theta is actually the same as talking about this angle 360 minus theta here. So even if I had left this as negative, it will still have given me the same thing as what I got in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so what it means here is that the sine of minus theta is actually the same as the sine of 360 minus theta. And what did we get as the sine of 360 minus theta? That's negative uh, sine theta. Okay, so now the simple meaning of this is that sine theta is an odd function. It acts on a, a negative angle to give you negative of the sine of the positive angle. So if I have, the, the meaning is that if I have something like sine minus 30 is actually the same as minus sine of positive 30. Okay, and what about the cosine? The cosine is a positive, uh, uh, an even function. So if I have sine of minus theta is the same thing as the cos of the positive theta. So don't even bother yourself. Just take the, the cos of the positive. And the tangent is also an odd function. So if I have the tan of minus theta is actually the same as a minus tan of uh, the positive theta so it makes use of the last quadrant you can see that is what happened in our last quadrant for sine for cosine and for tangent okay so of course as we go into examples we are going to see that much easier okay so look at the first example here it says we should find the sine of 150 okay so because i know Apart from calculator, I can't get the sign of 150 using the four-figure table. And if it is an exam, you know they will give you a four-figure table. So I would have to reduce this to an acute angle. And I know that this is a second quadrant and sign is positive there. So I should just do 180 minus that angle. And so this is the same thing as a sign of 30 degrees. And this is equal to 0 0.5, which is half. Okay, so that's uh, our answer there. And what about uh, the second one? So all you need to do basically is to ask yourself, what quadrant is this angle? This, uh, like the second one now, is in second quadrant. And cosine is negative in second quadrant. So all I need to do is remove this angle from 180 and just make it negative. So this is going to give me the cosine of 180 minus 135 is 45, and that is minus 1 over root 2, and that's my answer. Very simple and straightforward. What about the third one? So the third one is the tan of 200, and 200, uh, sorry, 210, and 210 is in the third quadrant. Yeah, is greater than 180. And so all you need to do, you ask yourself, is tan positive in the third quadrant? Add sugar to coffee, yes. So it has to be positive. 
And what do I do with this? Since it's greater than 180, I'll remove 180 from it to make it acute. So if you do 210 minus 180, you are going to get 30. So this is the same thing as uh, 1 over root 3. And that is your answer. So what about the fourth example? Should I allow you to do? Let me allow you to do the fourth and the fifth. Okay, the fifth is in the fourth quadrant and the third is also in the third quadrant. Yes, it's less than 270 is in the third quadrant. Okay, so let's look at the negative angle. So I'm going to example six now. So which is the cost of uh, minus 28 degrees. So like I said, cosine is even. So it's going to change it to positive. So it's the same thing as the cost of 28 degrees. And so all I'll need to do is either use my four-figure table or my calculator. And of course, the scores of uh, 120, uh, sorry, of 28 is zero with, I'm using a calculator now, is 0 0.88 in two decimal places. Uh, you can uh, take it to two decimal places or any other decimal places as you want, okay? And that's just how to handle our negative angles. Okay, if I take the, la uh, the last one, which is uh, the tan of uh, that, and I'm allowing you to do the number seven. Okay, so for the tangent of uh, one minus 125, what is that going to be? This is first of all going to be minus the tangent of the same 125, now positive. However, I know that 125 is in the second quadrant. And tangent is negative in the second quadrant. So that means that the tan of 120, uh, 25 alone is now going to be minus uh, tan of 180 minus 125. And 120 minus 125 is equal to 55 degrees. Okay, so and I can now multiply this and that is going to give me the positive of uh, 55. So if I take the tangent of 55 degrees, let me use my calculator. Okay, so that is going to give me 1.43 1, 1. Uh, approximately. Okay, so using my calculator. Now, but if you like, you can now use your calculator and also press the tangent of minus 125 and see what it's going to give you. You see, it will give you exactly the same answer. Alternatively, you can also press minus tangent of 125. That's this other one. You know, I've, I've done this, that's tan, uh, 55. I've also done this and I got the same answer. Now do this, that's minus tan 125. You will see that you will still get exactly the same answer. So but what this does for you is that it reduces it to an acute angle that you can um, uh, you can solve using your four-figure table, assuming the exam is an exam that does not allow a calculator. All right. So this is what I said to show us in this video, uh, the trigonometric uh, ratios of angles of any size, and then lastly, the trigonometric ratios of negative angles. Now, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel and do give a thumbs up to this video. Uh, also, share this video to your friends and we will see you in our next video. Bye.